Welcome back to Boring Build Friday. We're once again working on our 2019 GMC Yukon Denali. Now, if you don't know what Yukon Denali I'm talking about, link's up there, it'll get you caught up. So the painting gnomes did their part, so now it's time for me to do mine. We're gonna put all of this back together and get this Yukon back on the road. Let's get started. So we'll start by putting our bumper together, snapping it together actually. We'll snap the lower valance on, get it lined up, we use our bumper installation tool because I can't find the bumper assembly tool. Once we get most of the clips snapped in, we'll flip it over. We can snap in the rest of the clips we missed. And then we can actually put a few screws in it. We'll start them all. And once we have a few started, we can tighten them up. Put our J-nuts on for the lower brackets. Set our bracket in there. Bolt it in. A little more J-nuts in the center. Tighten those down. Got some center brackets here. Set those in place. and screw them in. I'll put some screws in the other side. Snap our J-nuts on there. And put our lower bracket on. Now we can snap in the lower grill. Still can't find the bumper assembly tool. Right, the fog light bezel just snaps in there. Big surprise, huh? The other fog light bezel. Then they put some clips on the back. We just gotta slide those in there. Then we can drop our fog light in. Bolt the fog light in. Then we'll put our little clips in the other side and drop our fog light in. up the fog light. Now we can put our harness in. We'll set it where we want it. Before we start snapping it in, make sure we get it all in the right spot. When it's laid out, now the holes kind of make sense. So we'll snap it in all its little spots. Replace our parking sensors that were broken. Put in our new ones. And put in the ones that are the right color. Snap them into the harness and then just snap them into the bumper. You can put them in the bumper first if you want. Move Mr. Spotty. And now we'll put the grill in. Snap it into place. Bet you guys never thought you'd see a Ferrari on my channel. Well, you still haven't. It's actually a Datsun. So now we'll put our two rivets in our grill. Since I didn't feel like starting up the compressors, we're gonna use the caveman method. And 
and now we can install the headlights. Plug them in, slide them into their tabs, and bolt them down. Now the driver's side. Plug it in. Line it up on the tabs and bolt it in. Now we'll install the rear bumper brackets underneath the fender. These are brand new. Somehow they broke our used ones. Luckily, these weren't too expensive. About $9 a piece. It's just three screws on the back. We'll tighten them up. And now we can install our bumper. Set it into place. Try not to scratch it. Really upsets the painting gnomes when I do things like that. We can use our bumper assembly tool to snap in and all the clips under the headlight and under the fender. And we'll put our bolts across the top. Here we learn a valuable lesson about why you don't feed the gnomes. Once you do, you end up with a roaming gnome throughout the rest of your video. Just one screw on each side on those brackets. Tighten those up. Now I'll tighten up all the brackets on the bottom. Plug in our bumper harness and then we can put our finish panel on. Put all our push pins in and onto the doors. Put the upper molding on. Put our rivets in. Still don't feel like listening to the compressor. Instead, we'll listen to the heaters. So we'll snap the molding in. Clip it on the seam all the way around. And then put our rivets in. I'll put the rear trim panel on. Slides in in the back. It's a little piece of two-sided tape we'll pull off at the top. Now we'll slide it in and snap it into its clips. I only get one shot at these. These clips don't survive. So now I'll do it on the other side. Slide the back in. Pull the backing off our two-sided tape. And snap the molding in. And we'll put our one screw in there. Put our weather stripping back up. And we'll put our belt molding on. Slide it in the front. Snap it down. Couldn't find the belt molding installation tool. So we'll just use our bumper installation tool instead. So now we can put the door handle on. Put the little gasket in first. And we'll slide the door handle forward. You have to pull the tab out that it clips into with the screwdriver as you slide it forward. I'll we'll put the cap on the back, screw it in. Make sure the cap's in there and put the plug in. Now you put the mirror in. Route the wires in there, snap it in, then bolt it in. Plug the wires into the door and plug them in. Now you put the screw in the back of the belt molding. Now we'll put the belt molding on the other side. Slide it in the front. Snap it in across the top. One screw in the back. Slide the mirror in there.
clip it in. Tighten up our bolts. Plug the harness in and plug the wires in. Remove Mr. Spotty and we're ready to go to the outside handle. Slide it in. So on this side I just reached in there and pushed the metal piece in that it slides into instead of using a screwdriver from the outside. Makes it a little easier. So once the tab's engaged, just slide it forward and it's locked in. Then we can put our cap on the back, slide it in there. I'm gonna move our little anti-theft bracket out of the way. Slide it out of there, get our screwdriver in. Then we can get to that bolt, tighten up that rear cap. Just pull the screwdriver out and that little plastic falls back into place. And we'll put our screw in there. Tighten it up. And one more screw in the back. Of course, this is the second time I'm doing this because I forgot to put the little gasket in behind the door handle. And I didn't think you want to watch the same process all over again. But it's in there now. So, put our caps back on. Get our flashlight out of there. I'll put a grab handle bracket off. Pull the front speaker off. And we'll pull a little cavity wax down in the bottom seam. The process almost as predictable around here as screaming when you back a truck off the trailer. So once we have a good coating of wax across the bottom seam, we can put our water barrier back up. Push it back on, snap our speaker in, bolt it in, put our grab handle bracket on, tighten it up, I'll put our window sweep in, now we're ready to put the door panel on. Plug in the harness in the front, snap it in, now we can plug in our handle, now we put the door panel on. Slide it over the lock in the back, line it all up, snap it in with the door panel installation tool. We'll put our bolts in our grab handle, one behind the handle and two in the bottom. Now we'll put our caps in. Now we'll put the right door together. Since it's the same as the other side, I'll include some parts I didn't include in the other side. We'll put this upper trim in. The inside snaps in around the pinch weld, then it clips in on the top. The gasket lets it get caught underneath it, so you just have to roll it out a little bit. The gasket's actually supposed to be on top of this molding. I'll pull everything off so we can get some wax inside that seam. All done. Now I'm put it back together. Now these are the clips that go under the window sweep. They come off with the door panel. Then you just take them off the door panel, put them in, and put the window sweep in. It's too hard to get them off when you're trying to take the door panel off, so you just take the whole window sweep out, pull them off later, and then snap them in. So now we're ready to put our door panel on, plug it in. Connect the cable to our door handle. Slide it over the door lock, line it up, and snap it in. Bolt everything in. Put all our little caps on. All done. Now everyone's favorite fender liners. Actually, these aren't too bad. I can almost stop complaining about fender liners in this car. Although they are carpeted. And do have 10,000 screws. But they line up pretty well. You don't have to fight with them. So we'll start all the screws, and then we'll snug them all up.
and onto the driver's side. I did clean these before putting them in, so the clean freak should at least be happy. Although you can't tell, because the carpeting likes to hold all the dirt. Tighten all the bolts up. So now we're ready to put the side moldings on. Pull the backing off the two-sided tape, toss it on the ground. We'll use our factory molding alignment system. Line up the back of it. And just keep it lined up as we work our way forward. Once it's in place, we'll just push it onto the door. We did heat the door up because it's getting cold here in the land of corruption and rust. So heating them up helps the molding stick better. We'll pull off our alignment system and our cheat sheet so we don't mix up the moldings. Crop off the tape, toss it on the ground. Put the backing off the molding on the other side. Line up the back of it. Work our way forward. Press it on. Pull off our cheat sheet and our molding alignment system. Crumple it all up. Let Mr. Spotty know what's going to happen to him if he keeps demanding more money. And we'll move him. Now we have the template for the name that we made before we took these off. Put it in where it belongs. And now we can put our letters on. Hopefully in the right order. But no guarantees. First one's always the hardest. And the other one just kind of pop in there. Once they're all in, push them on real good. Now we're going to take our template over to the other side. I had a few people that told me that I couldn't use a template on the other side because the words are backwards. Well, the spacing is still the same. So you just figure out where the eye goes and line it up from there. So now you pull off our template, toss it off. Now we're going to do our oil change. Pull the oil plug out. Try not wearing any oil. And we'll pull the filter off. Clean off the filter mount. Put our new filter up. Tighten it up. No, really tighten it up. Put the oil plug back in. Clean up our mess. Keep the clean freaks happy. And we'll put some oil back in it. These are all the steps required for a proper oil change. It seems pretty simple, but there are still some companies who will remain nameless that can't seem to get all of these steps in. Put our cap back on. And now we're going to put some cavity wax in the back doors. And try being lazy. We're just going to go through the drain holes. I really don't feel like pulling the door panels off. Well, we were denied in that one. We'll try the front one. Again, denied. Still haven't given up yet. Maybe there's another hole up here. There's not. So anyway, we're pulling the door panels off. It's not that hard. Just got our little caps behind our handles. Pop those off. Pull the bolts up. And snap the door panel off. Got our door handle and our plug. Unbolt our speaker and snap it out of there. And now we can get our wand in for our cavity wax. Snap the speaker back in and bolt it in. I'm ready to put the door panel back up. 
we'll run the wires for the window. Then we'll run the wires that light up the handle. Then we can plug in the handle. Line up the door lock. Line up the door panel and snap it in. Put all our bolts back in and our cap. We're all done and on to the other side. Put the door panel off in record time. And here's how you get the clips off that are underneath the window sweep. They just pop right out and then fall on the floor. Snap them back into the door. And we'll put our window sweep in. Tuck it in under each side. Push it down. Now pull the speaker out, put our wax in there, put our speaker back in. Plug our door panel back in, snap it in, put the bolts in, and we're done. Now on to the lift gate. It's got some drain holes in the back, so we'll tape up the center one. Two outer ones have little plastic caps, so we'll pull those off. Put our wand in there. Now we'll get to the other side. Oops. A little misfire. Clean up our mess. Put our caps back in. We'll pull that tape off later after everything gets solid. Otherwise we'll have a mess all over the back bumper. Now we're gonna do the hood. At the front seam. Seams on both sides. And we were able to get across the back from each side. I'll do the fenders. Over the wheel arches, back at the bottom, then behind the headlights. Same thing on the passenger side. Now's the perfect time to do all this. This truck was pretty much brand new and it had never seen salt. I'm not sure exactly where it's going, but better to have a little extra rust proofing in it and not need it than to have a car that looks like every other car in the Midwest in five years. So we'll pull our little caps out of the bottom of the rockers, put our wand in there, get our wax in, then put the caps back on, pull the caps off the other side, a little more wax, caps back on. Now we got a few spots that were going to be problems in the future, bolts and such. We'll just put a little wax on there. Make it nice and easy for the next guy. Like I said, perfect time to do this. We're going to get a good coating on the AC lines for the rear. Because if you've ever had to change a set of these, you know how bad they suck. We'll get the brake lines. These brake lines do have a plastic coating on them, so most of them are going to be fine. But the coating doesn't go all the way to the ends, so I'm spraying all the fittings. Then we'll get up inside the quarters, over the wheel wells in the back and anywhere else that salt is going to find its way into. Now you can put the front license plate bracket on, we'll line it up, drill our holes, and go get our rivet gun. Still no compressors. It's been nice. So here's our finished project. It took 10 days start to finish to do this job. On the first day, it was a Friday, I brought it in, I tore the front end off of it, and tore the used front end apart. On Saturday, the painting gnome came in and edged it all out for me. 
and when the paint was dry, I threw it all back together on Saturday. On Sunday, the bodywork gnome did all of his work, and one night during the week, Tuesday or Wednesday, I came in and did the mechanical work. Got it ready for paint, and then the painting gnomes painted it on Friday. Put it all back together that Saturday. That was all it took. It was definitely not a total loss. Even if it were all brand new parts, it still wouldn't have been a total. But when customers pay big premiums to insurance companies, sometimes the insurance companies break their rules, and they'll total a vehicle that shouldn't be totaled, just to keep the customer happy. And this one ends up with a rebuilt title, just like one that was hit by a semi and thrown off a cliff. Which is why I couldn't care less about title statuses, because they don't always tell the whole story. I have put a few hundred miles on this thing, it's pretty nice. My favorite option would have to probably be the heads up display. But this truck's a little too much money for me just to have heads up display, since I'm poor. So the build is complete. There's just one thing left to do. It's time to play everyone's favorite game. What's in my console? Huh. Everybody asked where they can buy my vehicles? Well, that's where. If they make it this far, sometimes I sell them before I can even put them up there, but I'm gonna try and put them up there. This one will be up there by the time you're seeing this video. Can't guarantee it'll still be there, but it's up there. What else is in here? Oh, bolts. Just once. I want to finish a build with no extra parts. What else is in here? Ah. Almost there. 9,999. Zero, 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 zero. I was sure I was going to find the combination. What else is in here? Oh, looks like I did find the combination. Better go get that. So we'll just use our Mustang workbench because that's really all it's good for. We'll cut this thing open. Oh, it's already open. Turns out the combination was 2238. Now, a lot of you sent me over to another channel, the lockpicking lawyer, so that I could get this open much faster. And I think you guys kind of really missed the point. This was supposed to kill time. And it's exactly what it did. When I was sitting in inspections or whatever, I always had this lock with me, and I just went through number by number until I got to 2238. And it opened up. Turns out, it was kind of like Al Capone's vaults. There was nothing inside. So, no treasures, but I have a lock that works. Of course, according to the lockpicking lawyer, it's not very secure. And there are faster ways. I actually did try one of his methods, and I couldn't get it. I guess I'm destined to fix cars and not pick locks. Although, I have picked a few locks in the past, and I was pretty successful. But thanks for sending me over to this channel, because I did spend quite a bit of time watching it. Maybe that's why you guys did a good video last week. So, you have yourselves to blame. But thanks anyway. So, that's all I have for you today. So like this video if you found it interesting. Share it if you think somebody else might. Subscribe to see... I'm not even going to say it. As always, thanks for watching. And I'll see you soon. Would somebody please come get their gnome?